Welcome to your first flip lesson. You'll find the first two chapters fairly easy, so most of these lessons are going to go pretty quickly. So let's get started. Chapter 1, Section 1, Variables and Expressions. Variable, a letter or symbol used to represent a number. In other words, if you take the example x equals 5, what it means is in this example x equals 5, every time you see an x, it just has a value of 5. Now this has to be assigned ahead of time, so if I said like b equals 3, then every time you see the b, you'll know that the value is 3. A variable just means that the letter is substituting the value. So in this case with x equals 5, when you see an x, it equals 5. Pretty basic. Now a constant is a number that does not change. Take the number 7. The number 7 is always a value of 7, because 7 is 7. Now when you see like 7x, the 7 is the constant, and what that constant means is there will be 7 x's. It's saying there's 7 of these variables. So 7x means 7 x's. Whatever it is, it will be multiplied by 7. Numerical expression has constants and operations. So if you have 5 plus 3, 8 times 5, 3 minus 7 plus 3, all you'll see is a constant and operations, numbers and what to do with them. An algebraic expression, however, has constant and operation and variables. There you will see not only you'll have your you'll have your operations, you'll have your constant, but you'll also have variables as well. Now, vocabulary for simple basic stuff I know, but we need to cover it. Uh, the times you look at is could be called times, product, equal groups of. The only two might surprise you are product or equal groups of. Just know that's associated with times. If you see the divide sign, divided by, or the word quotient, because quotient also means uh, divide by. Plus sign is plus, sum, or increased by. The minus is minus, difference, or less than. So a couple examples here. x plus 3 is x increased by 3, the sum of x and 3. m minus 7 is the difference of m and 7, 7 less than m. 2 times y could be 2 times y, or the product of 2 and y and k divided by 5 is k divided by 5 or the quotient of k and 5. Now go ahead you try. Put these sentences into equations. So in other words what I want you to do at this moment is when I tell you I'd like you to pause the video and try these five and see what you get. So go ahead and give it a try. Go ahead and pause. Hopefully you paused it and went ahead and tried to put these into equations and when you do that you would come up with different things for instance what you would have here is the product of 6 and 8 you should have 6 times 8 8 plus 4 you're going to have 8 and then plus 4 obviously 18 increased by 10 so you have 18 and the word increased by means to add equal groups of 5 and 7 now if you remember when you flip back equal groups was in times you might have forgot so you just put 5 times 7 does it matter which one comes first? Well, with times, they do work either way, but usually I put the first thing first and the second thing second. And 8 less than 10. Now, interesting thing here, 8 less than 10, 10 is actually the beginning, so you put the 10 first. Now, why is that? Because 8 less than means you're minusing by 8, but minusing from what? That's where 10 comes in. So 10 is actually first, then you minus 8. So hopefully you got these right. If you missed one, not a big deal. Just go back and see what you did. Let's move on. Other action words. For times, you might see put together equal groups. Again, pretty similar. Divide by, separate into equal groups. Okay, the word separate means to divide. To add means put together or combine. Okay. And minus is find out how much more or less. Find out how much more or less. Yeah, just the difference of. Okay. To evaluate means to find a value. So anytime you see the word evaluate, it simply means to solve. So why do they use evaluate instead of solve? It's just another word to know. So when you see it, just know it means to solve. Just like if you, see the, if you read in the, in the books, you see the word he said or she said. You could also say he exclaimed or she replied or he told, so on and so forth. So here you say that x equals 6, y equals 8, z equals 3. Now they have to tell you this. You know, If they don't tell you this, you can't solve the problem. So they will provide this. So they're saying if x equals 6, y equals 8, z equals 3, how do you solve this? Well, all we got to do is switch in. So there's an x, we put in the 6. All right, y is an 8, z is 3. So you plug them in. 
you get 6 plus 8 minus 3. Add the first two up, 14 minus 3 is 11. Make sure that when you have plus or minus, the order of operation goes from left to right, which I believe from your view would be left to right, I think. And the reason why you do that is because uh, equal values just go that way. If there was, however, time to divide, that's a different story, which we'll get to. So you go ahead and try again. So please try these four and pause at this time. Okay. Let's see how you did. So C minus A minus B, C was 20, minus A, which is 4, minus B, which is 12. Going from left to right, 20 minus 4 is 16, minus 12, I get 4. Let me double check, 20 minus 4 is 16, minus 12 is indeed 4. So there's your value there. Second, we have AB minus C. Now in this case, AB is touching, and touching means times. So 4 times 12. Then after that's done, minus the C, which is 20. Why do these go first? Not only are they left to right, but this represents the times, and times will go before and they are subtract. So 4 times 12 is 48, and 48 minus 20 should be 28. Number 3. A, B, C, they're all touching. So in this case, you multiply all three. Well, by the way, how do you solve it easiest? Me, personally, it's a little tougher. You can do it any way you want. You could take 4 times 12, which makes 48, and 48 times 20. Now, here's a quick way I'm going to do it. I'm going to times by 2 first, 6, carry the 1, put a 9. I'm just going to put a 0 at the back end of it because they have to add 0 to 20. That makes 960. So I believe it's 960. And finally, the last one, BC divided by A, you have to take B times C first, which is going to give you 240. Divide by that A, which is 4, 240, uh, we're looking for, I admit. Uh, 240 divided by 4, I believe, will give you 60. And there you have it. Hopefully you got all four right. Now, you can open your book and read the example 4 on page 8. And it talks about how there are 14 bottles. When they recycle these plastic bottles, they're saying that 14 bottles equal one square foot of carpet. Okay. So what they're going to do is they're first going to put 14x. Now why 14x? Well 14 is the number of bottles it takes to make a foot of carpet. And remember what they're talking about is when you recycle the bottles, when you melt down the plastic. They're saying that part of that plastic can go into making carpet. Not obviously the carpet fibers, but there must be plastic like in the undercoating or something like that. So they're saying 14x meaning for every 14 bottles, you know, you get a square foot of carpet. So the x value is how many square carpet was made. So in other words, you tell me there was five square foot of carpet. Well, then you times that by 14 to figure out how many bottles you used. Or if there were 20 feet of carpet made, you would take 20 times 14. So say you wanted 10 square foot of carpet. How many bottles you need? Well, just take 10 times 14. And you get 140. Make a table to find out how many bottles you needed for 50, 1500, and 3000 square foot of carpet. Same concept, if you look down here. Make a table to find out how many you need. Again, you're going to take them all times 14. The answer is there. And you would actually have uh, total bottles needed. You would not need square foot, though. Let me make that slight change. You just We're talking about how many bottles. No, we don't want foot squared. Let's get rid of that. Oops, excuse me. See, this is done live, so there's going to be mistakes here and there, and that's okay. It's all part of the process. So, yeah, so really, you know, it's not feet squared, it's just how many bottles total. This would be square foot right here. So, 50 square foot, 1500 square foot, 3000 square foot. This is just the number of bottles. So, I should just get rid of this one entirely. Alrighty, save that for posterity, and let's move forward. Now you try. There are 12 eggs in a dozen. Okay. There is 12 dozen eggs in a gross. How many eggs total? Now I'm going to give you a hint. You start with 12x. So go ahead, take a second, figure out how many eggs are in a gross. Go ahead. How'd you do? Take a look. The x was 12. Now why was it 12? Because there's 12 eggs in a dozen. So the x could be 12. Then there's 12 dozen eggs. 12, 12. And hopefully you got 144. Now go ahead and find out how many eggs are in 25, 75, or 150 grosses. Hint, you can actually start 
with 144x. Why 144x? Because there's 144 eggs in one gross. So go ahead at this time. Pause. All right, let's see how you did. You take 144 times 25. 0, 2, 2, carries the 2, 7. So I'm getting 720 up here. Because you're in the tens column, you add a 0. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 1 is 2. Add them all up. 0, 10, carry the 1. 6, carry the 1. I'm getting very poorly drawn, albeit 3,600. And another way you can do it is because you're uh, taking times 25. You figure there are 425 and 100, so if I divide this twice and times this by 100, it would actually be the same thing. So 144 uh, four divided by 2 would be 72. Divide that by 2, you get 36 times 100, bammo. But we'll talk about more of that being later on in the year. For the other ones, for 75, because 25 times 3 is 75, just take this times 3, and you're going to get, I believe, 10,800. And then 150, you just double it to 21,600. Hopefully you got all the right answers. Get that little piece out of there. All right, and now what I'd like you to do is Tomorrow we are going to do page 9, 2 through 30. Now this was actually made before the flip format. So what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to have you do page 9, 2 through 30 for the night's lesson. What I will do is I'm going to have a quick online quiz for you posted below. Uh, I will show you where that is, and then you'll be able to do that. It's going to be right below the picture description. It's going to be below that. We'll look at it in class, hopefully, before you saw this video. Thanks again. Bye.